G'day, I'm Rob Maliki coming to you from Gadigal Land in Sydney, and this is Choosing Your Uni. Today's guest is Anna Naidu from Monash University. Anna, thanks for joining me. How good is this? Yeah, it's awesome. No problem. Thank you for having me. This is really good to connect with you because uh, you've just won something pretty awesome. We're going to get to that in a second. <laughs> just before we started rolling, you were telling me something a little bit different about your your background because you're not from Melbourne originally, are you? No, no. So I grew up in Cairns predominantly. Yeah. Um, I moved down to Melbourne about five years ago. So that was a massive change in itself. And that's been something that I've had to adapt to, but it's also brought along a lot of important and immense opportunities like, you know, attending the schools I've attended, getting to go to Monash University, and then it's all led to this yeah. Before we get into this amazing, wonderful thing that you've just won, what was that like? Because you lived your whole life in Cairns, presumably, and then it's just yeah. the last five years. What, do you remember that moment when your folks sort of came home and said, Anna, yeah. <laughs> we've got some news for you? I don't think it really hit home until there was like a for sale sign out the front of my house. And it was a little bit sad because I did live up in the tropics Often in those communities, you do have very tight knit um, households. I know that in our street, everyone knew each other, and it was a much more sort of, you know, growing up, it was a much more of a group effort in that sense. So I wasn't just leaving behind cans, but also almost family members on my street and my neighbours. So that was sad, but in coming down to Melbourne, it meant that I could also reconnect with my actual family members who live in Melbourne. Oh, right. So, cool. Yeah. So that was also a major benefit. So, yeah. So your family was from there originally and then moved up to Cairns for a period of time. Is that right? Your folks? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Interesting. And tell me, so for those people, whether they're Australians who've never been up north or maybe even like an international student who might be watching this, yeah. what's it like? What's Cairns like? It's very, very relaxed, very casual. You can, you know, walk down the street in your shorts with no shoes on. It's, you know, very spaced out. There's not a lot of traffic. You can go down the freeway and there's, like, no other cars sometimes. I was telling you before, there's only really, like, two seasons in the year. So you've got your wet season and your dry season, which is very similar to lots of other tropical places in the Indo-Pacific region as well. And the people are very, very friendly, very connected with nature as well, which is a little bit of a difference, I think, in coming down to Melbourne for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever have to go through a cyclone? Yes. And actually that experience of packing up the house, you know, duct taping the windows so they don't shatter. At one point it was cycling Yazzie. Our oh, family yes. had to pack up and we got in our car and drove further north. That experience actually really informed one of my answers for my NCP interview. So that was, yeah, bringing in life experience was majorly beneficial there. Wow, what a spin out. And yeah. so then you moved down to Melbourne. What do you find the difference is? So you land in Melbourne. What, what was your sort of initial impression, you know, the first couple of days, weeks, months? Yeah, so as I said before, living out in a quiet sort of a as I said, spaced out sort of city in Cairns. Coming to Melbourne where everything's a bit more cramped together and yet everyone's kind of isolated in their own little pockets at home. So that was very different. You don't have that sort of same communal feel on your street, for example. And I remember going to a city and just getting freaked out by the amount of people that were crossing the road. I'd never seen that amount of people sort of clumped together at once as well. And yeah, it was, a, it was actually quite a shocking experience seeing that for the first time, but you do get used to it as with anything. So yeah, after a while it was fine. I, I can yeah. totally empathise. We recently spent 527 days travelling around Australia and when I got home and I was walking up my street, you know, people walked down the street towards you and yeah. you've just been out in the country. So you're kind of like, you know, looking at looking at them yeah. in their eyes, like ready to say hello, g'day, g'day, g'day. Yeah. And, and no, they're just like, no, 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 I'm not <laughs> you, no. Don't. <laughs> it's so weird, isn't it? It's yeah, like it is very country strange. Australia. And if, if you're watching this somewhere else and you're thinking about studying in like country Australia in a regional area, it is such an amazing experience. 
yeah. just because you connect so much more as people, which I think is a, is a beautiful thing. And us folks in the city tend to, tend to miss that a bit. I think so, yeah. It's a bit unfortunate. <laughs> but the advantage is we do have amazing unis like Monash. What made you choose Monash to begin with? I think ultimately it was like in the initial stages and looking at all the other unis as well was the proximity of Monash and then actually looking at the degree that I wanted to do. So that was international relations and law. Yeah. And that was just looking at the courses that Monash was offering kind of seems like a no brainer to go do that. Fantastic. Um, community for both. Yeah. Yes, for sure. And then just going through school, I was very passionate about international relations. That's always what I wanted to do. And that was my goal getting through U12. And I saw law at Monash as offering something that would bolster that passion of mine. So that would offer me more practical, like a practical toolkit almost to actually help me with that international relations side of things to sort of get me where I wanted to go. And the other thing that really stood out to me about international relations or global studies at Monash was their global immersion guarantee tour. So they do that for first years. And in year 12, I did that completely in lockdown. So you can imagine getting the opportunity to actually go overseas was an immense pull for me to go and do that. Unfortunately, I didn't get to do that because then I went into lockdown again. Oh, wow. Um, oh, yes. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> in my first year of uni but yes that was a massive drive for me to do that course for sure and so tell me why why international relations you said you've been passionate for a long time where, where did that come from yeah so i think when i was five i traveled across like india and malaysia i went through nepal and a couple of countries through europe as well with my mother and father so that really I think gave me a bit of a global perspective at that very young age, just taking me out of, I think, my very small bubble at home. And then going through school and talking about what I was interested in, so that was English. I did a subject called Global Politics in Year 11 and then connecting that with my family roots. So I have a very spread out family across the Indo-Pacific itself, nice. across India and Malaysia. So then connecting my academic side of things to then what my family was experiencing, what they had experienced in the past. And I think that really drove my passion to then go do international relations at uni for sure. Amazing. So how'd your family end up in Australia? Yes. So on my mother's side, that's, we don't know. I have no idea. All oh, right. Interesting. On my, <laughs> no one knows really. <laughs> On my father's side, uh, it was my grandpa. So he grew up in Malaysia on a rubber plantation, actually. And he went through their school system, so the British school system that was in place there, and managed to get a scholarship, which got him through uni. And with that, he then went to the United States. Essentially, he was applying for a green card there and a green card in Australia. And the Australian one came first. <laughs> and so that was the decision. And that's how we ended up in Australia. Isn't it crazy? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. That must have been fairly impactful at a young age then, travelling to these places where you've got family history and treading the boards, so to speak. Yes, you know, for sure. Like spirits, right? Like the spirits of our families are, are in these places. Yeah. yeah. It makes it a lot more real. I think when you're studying something on paper, it's hard to sort of connect with it but it definitely helps when you have yeah. those actual familial roots that you can connect with for sure yeah also yeah. being at monash now what parts of law and international relations are you enjoying the most yes so i really enjoyed this topic i did called the modern middle east and i think that's given me a much more informed perspective on how i guess the history of a region can really impact contemporary politics Hmm. and how a society is built and then that's really connected in with a subject I did called constitutional law last semester so just taking those two things and another topic I did which was foreign policy analysis that really just connected the dots for me in terms of where I wanted to go just looking at how these little decisions can really impact people's individual lives the shape of a society as well hmm. and so when you're looking at countries in the Indo-Pacific who are sort of going through those stages of developing as well, and even Australia as well. That's something I'm very interested in, for sure. Yeah, it's, it's crazy, isn't it? I mean, you think about development as a whole, 
I mean, obviously across the region, there's a lot of development that needs to get, be done. But here with our First Nations people, God blimey, we've got a lot of work left to be done. Yes. Yeah, a lot yeah. of work. Yeah. 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 And, uh, okay, so you, you mentioned earlier the Global Immersion Guarantee, Guarantee. Yes. program. If nobody's heard of that, what is it? So essentially, like I said before, it's for, I think it's extended beyond global studies students. I'm not sure whether it was just for this year or that's going to continue going on. But for me going in, it was just for global studies students. And essentially you could choose a destination. So it had options like Malaysia, Jakarta. I think Italy might have been one. There were a couple of others. And essentially you do a subject overseas with your peers that you studied with in your first year and you get a full sort of cultural immersion while you also get I think much more of a grounded insight into what I guess what the political space looks like over there what it's like to live over there and how I think Australia's relationship with that host location is like I think from their perspective which is very uh, a good insight to have for sure. Nice. Yeah. What do you think are some of the other advantages of studying at Monash? I think it's a wonderful community. There's lots yeah. of, I, it seems to pull in a lot of unique individuals all across the country. So it's not just people from Melbourne. There's a lot more international students coming in now, which is really great. And because of that, I think the extracurriculars they offer are quite diverse. They have a lot of little communities or like international students coming in. They have sort of festivals that people can join in on after you've like finished studying for the day. And it gives you, I think, a, an opportunity to connect with fantastic tutors. That's one thing that's really stood out to me, just the immense experience they have hmm. and immense connections they have. They've been so wonderful just having that opportunity to go after class to talk to them about something you're interested in. And they're always, you know, they're with open arms, just willing for you to talk to them about whatever it is that you've talked about in class or perhaps something they've done in the past that they've studied or where they've worked. Yeah, that's definitely an added benefit of going to Monash for sure. What else are you involved in outside of the academic stuff? Yeah, so moving from academics, I guess this is sort of academics, but at Monash for Law, they do offer excellent mooting experiences, mm. which I really, that's really cemented in place sort of why I'm doing law and given me a lot of confidence in that. They also offer a range of like you can do sporting activities. So I did soccer at the beginning of this year. And then moving out of Monash, I've done some volunteering experiences as well in my local community with my council as well. Tell me more about those. I'm such a huge fan of volunteering. I think it's almost the best thing that you can do. Yeah. While you're at uni, outside, outside of study, of yeah. course. And if you've got to work to leave, those are kind of non-negotiables, but so valuable. So what have you done? Yes. So I volunteered with our youth community. So, I, so my local council is the White Horse City Council. And essentially what we did throughout the year was look at key themes. So that was mental health in young people, looking at healthy relationships and job skills. So those were our three key themes throughout the year. And then we looked at, okay, well, how can we then get youth involved in actually trying to engage with council in ways that council can sort of support them in those things, as well as in more practical things. So we had workshops throughout the year that we ran. We consulted with young people on what they wanted to see in their community. And it was also really amazing connecting with like uh, youth activists as well. So people I never, ever would have met or perhaps known about if I hadn't done this experience and just having those conversations with them during those workshops and just it was really eye-opening, just tracking their journey to where they are now, why they're doing what they're doing and they're like these little heroes almost, just nice. the things that they do. They're very, they're amazing people. So, yeah, that's definitely been a highlight of that experience for sure. I think it's so, so valuable, you know, because I'm sure you've also met a ton of professionals who are out there working in all sorts of areas now. Yeah. It's one of those things that I realised looking back, the number of people who I met in my 20s who are older than me, who I wouldn't have called mentors at the time. You know, I just was working with them or working for them or, you know, working on a project, whatever it might be. 
But when you look back years later, you're like, holy moly, those people have been so instrumental in getting me to where I am. Yeah. If I hadn't been involved in all of these different things, then it wouldn't have happened. No, for sure. Yeah. So getting out there and having those professional experiences, with, I mean, volunteering just says something on a resume. I mean, internships are very good, really good. But I think volunteering is the next level up. So it's always a mate, like, yeah, for sure. Even, you know, the people who did my references for the NCP thing were the people that were my supervisors volunteering with. So, nice. yeah, they've just been very instrumental in helping me to get where I am today, for sure. Amazing. It's been so great talking with you today. Thanks for sharing your experience with choosing your uni. No problem. Thanks for having me. <laughs> and for those of you, yeah, it's been awesome. For those of you watching at home, if you want any more, content to help you choose your institution. Remember, this is a decision that costs you years of your life, tens of thousands of dollars. You want independent, unbiased advice, choosing your uni.com. You will find everything that you need. Have yourself a great day. Thanks, Anna.